Heather Brabham and I work for Beaufort County School District and welcome to Teaching Through Television. Today I'm going to be talking with you about a book because of an acorn by Lola and Adam Schaefer. This lesson is going to have a science focus. The first segment you may have seen there was a read aloud about because of an acorn. We will not be reading the book. We're just going to be focusing on the pictures within the book through a science lens. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the author Lola and Adam Schaefer. They uh, went on a two-day hiking trip through the Cumberland Plateau, which is located in the Southern Appalachian Mountains in states such as uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Alabama. Through their two-day hike, they found there was a huge interconnected interconnectedness between plants and animals in the forest, and that inspired this story. So for today, we're going to be focusing on a science standard that is for second grade, and that standard is obtain and communicate information to describe and compare how animals interact with other animals and plants in the environment. But before we get started, I want to talk to you about our lesson goals. For students, our I can statement today for our lesson is, I can describe and compare how animals interact with other animals and plants in the environment from the text. There are some key words within this I can statement that I really wanted to focus on, which are interact and environment. Interact is to respond to another in a social situation. For example, I was pleased to see how my brother and sister were interacting. Think about your family situation right now. How are you guys interacting at home? Environment, all the things together surrounded, um, surrounded by animals and humans in, the, in our natural world. It's everything that is around you. An example is thriving bird, tropical birds thrive in the environment of a rainforest. Do you have a pet at home? What do you do to create their environment at home? For example, I have a dog. I have a backyard for the dog to run outside. My dog has a blanket to lay on for their bed or to take naps. He has food bowl and a water bowl. So I've created this healthy environment for my pet. So that is environment, everything around you. So for today, in order for us to master this I can statement, we have a task to focus on. We're going to be using information from the text because of an acorn, and we're going to draw a picture that shows how animals interact with other animals and or plants and describe how the picture uh, shows this relationship. So we're going to be focusing by using, we're going to be focusing our learning by using a T chart. So I'm going to count down to 10 and I want you to run and go find a piece of paper and something to write with. It can be anything. It can be the back of a magazine. It could be the newspaper. It could be a scrap piece of paper. Are you ready? Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So what I want you to do with your piece of paper is make a T, a large T, kind of like the chart that you see here. You're going to have a line down the middle. On one side, you're going to have animal interactions, and on the other side, you're going to have plant interactions. You don't have to have the fancy title at the top unless you really want to be creative and have a title. But our title for this purpose is going to be Animal Interactions with Other Animals and Plants. So to guide our thinking through the analyzation of these pictures, we're going to be taking notes throughout this presentation to make sure that at the end we have enough information to answer our final, our final task. Are you ready to begin? Let's go. So again, we're not reading the text. We're looking at the picture. What do you see in this picture? I let, put some guiding questions on here to start our thinking. What is an acorn? Do you see the acorn? What kind of tree grows from an acorn? What is coming out of the bottom of the acorn? So let's talk about these three questions. What is an acorn? Right, it's a nut that has one seed inside of it. And what is coming out of that seed? What do you see? You see leaves that's gonna turn into a tree. And in Beaufort County, we have a bunch of trees that come from an acorn called an oak tree. But there's many other species of trees that come out of acorns. And then down below at the bottom, what is going to hold that tree into the ground? The root system, correct. So you can see the roots coming out of the acorn, but there's other roots that you can see in this picture. What are they? The grass roots, right? So 
But we have to remember our task. We're trying to find interactions between an animal and a plant or an animal and an animal. Do you see an interaction here on this page? No, I don't see an interaction either. It's just strictly a plant that is growing into the ground. So we're not gonna write anything on our chart. This is our second picture. What do you see in our second picture? I see a bird. I see a tree, a very tall tree, not a, a new tree, a very tall tree. I see a bird's nest. I wonder if that bird is flying to the nest. Could that be an interaction between an animal and a plant? Of course it could be. So let's get our charts out. So is this an animal-animal interaction or is this an animal-plant interaction? It's an animal-plant interaction. So on your T-chart, under the plant side, you're gonna, you can word this however you'd like, but I'm gonna write bird using a tree to make a nest. We have an animal-plant interaction. Our next slide, our next picture, let's look at this. There's a lot going on in this picture, so let's look at it very, very closely. You see a bird. I see lots of flowers. I see leaves. Did you guys check out that insect? What's inside of that leaf that you see there? Could those be seeds maybe? The question on the bottom says, what do birds eat? So this picture kind of gives me some clues. Maybe the bird eats the insect. Maybe the bird eats the seeds. I've never seen a bird really eat a flower. But is there an interaction here? Or is the bird just looking? Is the insect just there? I don't really see an interaction quite yet. But look at the next page. What is happening here? The bird does eat the insect. But look at the page with the leaf where we saw the seeds. What are those seeds doing? Right, they're falling down. So maybe, I wonder if when the bird snatched the insect off of the branch, the seeds fell. That is quite an interaction between animals and plants. So let's get out our T-chart. We have a couple interactions to write down. For our animal interaction, we have birds eating insects. For our plant interaction, we have a bird landing on a branch and seeds fall. And now you might be asking, why would we put that on there? Because that's kind of an interaction, but maybe not so as solid as a bird eating an insect because we saw that happening. But I know from previewing this book that the next page really defines why this is important. Because when the bird snatches the insect off of the branch and the seeds fall, Look what starts growing. You have a frog in front of a small stem that looks like a flower. And then the flower blooms. So maybe when the bird caught the insect, it shook the branch, the seeds fell, and a flower grew. That is a great example of an interaction. So we're gonna expand on it a little bit more on our T-chart and say, birds landing on a branch and seeds fall, then the seed turns into a flower. So moving on, what do you see in this picture? I see a tree or a bush that have, has flowers and fruit. Do you see any animals? I don't see any animals. So maybe there isn't really an interaction here. No, no interaction, not even an insect on the branch. The next page, there's a lot going on on this page. Let's look at it. We have a woodpecker in the tree, a chipmunk on the ground. We have uh, two deer. One looks like a baby, one looks a little bit older. Could be his mom, could, uh, could be a brother or a sister that's older. They're in the forest. I see grass, the deer might be eating grass. Are there any interactions here between an animal and a plant? 
and an animal and an animal? Yeah, we could put down that the deer was eating the grass but we don't really know if it's grass there because the author didn't really put anything there. So if you want to put that on, on your T-chart, you're more than welcome to. But there's no other interactions here. They're just there in the forest, looking, being. So on this T-chart, we did put eating grass and we did put chipmunk eating the fruit off of the tree because we we know that the next page, the author really zoomed into the corner of that page with that chipmunk. And you can see this orange or this fruit. Chipmunks like to eat berries. And he looks excited that he's gonna jump up and get that piece of fruit to eat. So we've had two interactions, the deer eating the grass and the chipmunk eating the fruit. So, Maybe your, your T-chart looks like mine. Maybe you've added some others. That's okay. Let's look at this picture. What do you see here? What is that snake looking at? Is he going to eat the chipmunk that has the fruit in its mouth? Could the chipmunk be the prey of the snake? That's kind of exciting. I've never seen a snake eat a chipmunk before, but I know that they eat animals. So let's add that to our T-chart. The chipmunk eating the fruit, and the, or excuse me, the chipmunk is the prey to the snake. So the prey means that the chipmunk is the food for the snake. Moving on to our next page, we have the snake getting taken away by a bird. But what kind of bird is it? That picture, that first picture doesn't really show us. But in the next one over here, it's a hawk. The snake is getting taken away by the hawk. You have a bear and a bear cub. And you also have a cardinal up there in the tree. So we have a lot of interactions happening here. We have bears being together. And we have a hawk taking the snake away. So the snake is the prey for the hawk. So we're going to add the snake is the prey for the hawk. In other words, the snake is the food that the hawk is going to the hawk is going to eat the snake. And then you could also add the bird or the bears, the mother bear and the baby cub <clears throat> being together in the forest, like a sense of community. So moving on, now we have the hawk in the tree with the snake. <clears throat> but look at the squirrel. What is the squirrel eyeing up on that tree? Could it be that acorn? But if I was that squirrel, I sure wouldn't go after that acorn with a hawk there and a snake. And then look at the corner. Do you see a bird in a nest? But we've already seen the bird in the nest at the very beginning of the book. So let's not focus on the bird in the nest. <clears throat> let's focus on the squirrel that's eating the acorn and then the hawk. Look at the hawk. What's underneath that hawk? I know the picture might not be perfect, but can you see the acorns underneath the hawk on the branch? So do you remember in the beginning where we talked about the bird getting the insect and then the seeds falling from the branch after the insect was taken? Maybe the same thing happens here. When the bird lands on the branch with the snake, maybe those acorns fall. And it does. Look at that, that very next page, that acorn does fall. So let's add this to our T-chart. We have the squirrel that's eating an acorn, and we have the hawk that lands on the branch, and the acorn falls. So what happens when the acorn falls? We have a forest. Do you see any interactions in our forest here? Now there might be way deep, deep, deep down underneath those trees, but did the author portray any interactions between an animal and a plant or an animal and an, another animal? No. That's just the end of the story. So let's look back at our T-chart that we have here. We have birds eating insects for animals, or animals versus uh, animal interactions with other animals. We have birds eating insects, we have chipmunks as prey to the snake, and we have the snake that is a prey to the hawk. And then on our plant interactions, we have birds using a tree to make a nest. We have bird 
landing on a branch which causes the seeds to fall and then seeds turn into a flower. We have the deer eating grass. We have the chipmunk eating fruit from the tree. We have the squirrel that eats the acorn. And we have the hawk that lands on a branch and an acorn drops. So through these interactions between animal and animal and animal and plant, do you see how they're connected? Our animals are eating other animals, but they're also eating other plants, and they're using the plants as their environment, as their home for protection. Think of the tree with the nest. The birds put those nests in those trees for protection from predators down on the ground. They want to be up high. Think of the chipmunk eating the fruit off of the tree that grew and the squirrel getting the acorn off of the tree. They're all interconnected. And that was the whole point of the author when she, her and her husband went hiking was to look at that interconnectedness. And I think they did a very good job portraying that in this book. What do you think? Definitely. So we're gonna use this T-chart to complete our task. We always have to go back to our task. So our focus was I can describe and compare how animals interact with other animals and plants in the environment from the text. So your task was, is, to use information from the text because of an acorn to draw a picture that shows how animals interact with other plants and or, meaning you can either do plants and animals or you can only do plants or you can only choose an animal and describe how your picture shows this relationship. So when you're doing this, you're going to break this down. I'm going to show you my thinking behind this. For the very first thing, for the very first part of the task, we're going to draw a picture. And if I was very artistic and you could see me drawing this picture, I don't think I could do it as well as the author or the illustrator of this book. So what I did is I wanted to draw a picture of the bird and the bird's nest. So I took the tree out of the very couple first pages of this book and I added the nest in there. We can all walk outside and possibly see a nest. You'll never really see it on the ground unless it falls out of the tree. Right now, I have a squirrel's nest in my palm tree at my house, and those little rascals, they're funny in that tree. But back to our task. I had to draw a picture of the tree because I wanted to show how the animal interacted with a plant. So the tree is my plant, the bird's nest and the bird are part of the animal interaction. So the second part of this assignment was to use information from the text because of an acorn to explain how your picture shows this relationship between the animal and the plant or the animal and the animal. So this is just my thinking. I'm just going to jot out some little answers here. So in the book, Because of an Acorn, I saw the bird use a tree to build a bird's nest. I know that the bird built the nest up high to be safe from predator, predators. It's easy access to food because we saw that the bird landed on other branches to get the insects. And then we saw how birds actually help spread seeds by landing on branches because when they knock the branch, the seeds can fall down. So yeah, I think that's how, that's, that's how I'm going to use the text to explain this. So the third and final step is to put it all together. You have your two drafts, your draft of the drawing, and then your thought process on how you were going to explain that relationship between your picture and how the animal and plant interacted or how the animal and animal interacted. So what I did is I took my talking points and I put it into a quick little paragraph with short sentences. And it says, in the book, because of an acorn, because I had to connect it to the text, I saw a bird's nest in a tree to stay safe from predators. Birds also use trees for easy access to food like insects and seeds. Birds also help spread seeds by landing on a branch, which causes, the branch, which causes them to drop to the ground. I drew a tree with a bird's nest to represent how plants and animals interact. Now let's see you try. And when you're finished, I want you to read your connection out loud to somebody. It can be your grandma, your grandpa, your mom, brother, sister, whoever is around you, and ask them if they could identify the connection between an animal and a plant and an animal and an animal in your picture and in your writing. So with our parent connection, thank you students for participating with us with me this today. 
uh, I would like to talk to your parents a little bit about how you can do this with other books with having a science focus. So my first recommendation would be to create a purpose for reading. First, you should preview the book prior to reading it with your student. When you preview the book, you can create questions in your head or jot them down quickly or even put a sticky note on the page to remind you, hey, I got a question for my kid that goes beyond just the words on the text. As you can see, I was not reading the book. I was creating questions based on what I saw in the book. And when I start questioning the reader, the reading gets deeper than just the text in the book. And the students start to develop a deeper understanding um, than just a, the words on the page. And then that leads to outside of school of just understanding the details around them, their surrounding environment and what's happening around them. So questioning is a great strategy while you're reading with your kids to get that deeper understanding of the text. And while you may not be creating assignments for your students, it might be helpful to summarize their learning of the book. Every lesson that a teacher creates, at the very end, there's closure. You're closing the lesson. You're summarizing what was taught that day, what your kids did, and the lesson is closed for the day. It might get picked up the next day, but there's always this, this ending of the day. So it's just like when you're reading a book. There needs to be an ending to the book. So summarize, recap. What did you like about the book? What did you not like about the book? Do you think the author did a good job doing this? What could the author have done better? Did you see all of the details on this one page? What stood out to you? How did this book impact you? Those are just simple little questions that could help your student close the purpose of that book and move on to the next. And what you're doing is you're creating this skill for the student to take onto other texts. So as you noticed in my student focus, I put at the very end to a text. I didn't put because of an acorn because you can take this strategy of just looking at each page in a book to any other book with a science focus. It could be a math focus or a social studies focus. It doesn't strictly have to be science. But just creating this skill will help you and your student enjoy reading and have a purpose for reading. Thank you again for joining me for Beaufort County School District Learning Through Television.